close your eyes, watch your breath. Watch it all the way in, watch it all the way out. Try to focus on whichever part of the body is the warmest. See if you can spread that sense of warm energy throughout the rest of the body. It's cold outside right now, but the mind doesn't have to be cold. Cold is a quality of the air. The body picks it up, but then the mind comments on it. The mind itself is not cold, but it comments and doesn't like it. It's too cold. But that doesn't help anything. You have to remember the mind is a separate quality. You want to keep it separate. And John Fuang, my teacher, tells the story when he was out in the forest, set up his umbrella tent one night, didn't see any rain coming from anywhere. And then at midnight, the sudden storm came up. Lots of wind, lots of rain. It was really cold. So he took all of his robes, and except for one, his under robe, and packed them into his bowl to keep them dry. And then he sat there in the wind and the rain. And his meditation topic was, the body's wet, but the mind's not wet. The body's cold, but the mind's not cold. And he was able to get to a state where the mind really did separate out from the coldness and the wetness. And this is an important principle in our lives, not just with the cold and heat, but with everything outside. When things don't go the way we want them to, the mind gets spoiled, even though it doesn't have to be. But if it just picks up its environment, that takes on the environment, good or bad, all too often bad, and then it suffers. What you want to do is develop a state of mind that's independent of things outside, where your goodness is independent. It doesn't have to depend on things outside being good. So when situations are easy, you do good. When situations are hard, you do good. You don't let the situation outside rule you, and you don't let your moods rule you as well. Remember, your mind is basically awareness and this thinking ca capacity. And you want to keep the awareness as distinct as you can, so you can watch the thoughts. And if the thoughts are unskillful, you can say, I don't need these. These are not helping. You don't have to be their slaves. Because if our goodness depends on things outside being a certain way, other people can push us around as much as they want. They declare crises and everybody gets afraid, and then they, people will just do what they're told. So you have to step back a bit and say, what is really right? What's the good thing to do now? Make your goodness independent of other people's. Because if, you're depend if your goodness depends on their being good, that's a sign of weakness. You want a strong mind, a strong mind that's good no matter what. That engages in generosity, engages in virtue, engages in meditation, independent of its conditions outside. So you know have a good store of goodness to take with you. I guess customs at death is very strict. You try to take material things and they don't let you take any at all. The only things you take with you are the results of your past actions. So make sure that while you're alive and are making these actions in the present, that they are good no matter what. And that way you can be secure, you can take good things with you. And you've left good things behind in the world. This is the kind of goodness that spreads around, it shows goodwill for yourself, goodwill for everybody else. So an important quality of a good mind is that it is strong. And we do the meditation in order to develop that strength, so we can separate the sense of awareness out from the conditions around it and the conditions in the body, even thoughts in the mind, so they can be in charge of those thoughts. Make sure they always go in a good direction.